Sometimes editing in Lightroom can feel like you're operating the Death Star. There's all these sliders, but what exactly do they all do? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the contrast and presence sliders to bring out the most detail in your photos. To start, texture, clarity, and dehaze are all versions of contrast, but they're smart contrast. Each of these sliders analyzes a different portion of your image and allows you to either add or remove contrast. So what is contrast? Well, if you think of contrast as this rubber, <laughs> as this rubber band I have here, where on one side is the black and on the other side is the white, when you increase contrast, it's kind of like stretching out this rubber band. It increases the difference between the black and the white. Moving the contrast slider exaggerates this difference and makes your image appear more contrasty. Exactly like the rubber band analogy, I have this image with colors ranging from zero or black all the way up to white. And if I grab my contrast, what you can see is right up in this histogram, I'm getting the exact same effect that I got with my rubber band. I'm essentially stretching out where the darker tones become darker and the brighter tones become more white. I can do the opposite and when I go left, it makes everything look more gray. So increasing contrast kind of exaggerates the differences between the blacks and the whites and then lowering the contrast reduces that. Now that may be good for some images, but then we get into things like, well, what if I only want more contrast in the small details? Or what if I want more contrast in clouds or in in other portions of my image. Well, that's where we get to the presence tab and now all of a sudden we have way more control over how to adjust contrast. I'm gonna to jump to this image, which actually represents the different scales of texture you can have in your image. On the left is really fine grain texture like sand. And on the right is really low frequency or really blocky textures like clouds or solid colors. What I can do is if I go into contrast and I slide that up, it kind of universally increases the whites and decreases the blacks, again, to give us that more contrasted look. But let's say I only wanted to affect the left side of my image here, which is the sandy texture or something that's really, really fine detail in my image. Well, if I grab the aptly named texture slider and increase that, what you'll notice is I start to get more contrast just in those fine grain details. And I might have to zoom in to show you because it's really small, but if I go like this and drag it up, now it's exaggerating the difference in those details and also in some of the details in here because we have on the left again, the really fine grain details and then in the middle, kind of those middle portions. So if I do the opposite and I'll go back here, that's what it looks like, zero texture. If I go to the left, it sort of smooths out all those details. So you have to be really careful and I'll show you next an example of how to use that on actual portraits. Just keep in mind, texture is for really small grain details. Next, we have clarity and that's where you start to affect the medium details. If I drag clarity all the way up, what you can see is it starts to increase the contrast around larger blocks of color. In this case, these kind of blotchy cloudy areas start to become more defined. You can also do the opposite lower that down. And of course you can use both of these techniques in combination with each other. Say you want more texture, but less clarity. Now all of a sudden you get more detail in the fine high frequency areas. And then you, you know maybe drop some of the detail or the contrast in those medium frequency areas. Now I'll just reset that and show you the last one, which is dehaze. Dehaze is pretty straightforward. If you have a photo that you took that was taken on a foggy day, or maybe you took it underwater, or maybe it got washed washed out because you had a, a sun streak coming in through your photo, what it does is it really recovers all of those blacks. Right off the bat, it's really making this look way more dark and way more contrasted. But hold on because I'm gonna show you a practical example of how to use the dehaze. So in summary, texture is for small details, clarity is for pulling out medium details, and dehaze is for pulling out really large details. This is the type of photo that I would wanna use texture on. And she's got amazing skin, but let's say I wanted to just slightly make it look a little bit smoother. I could come in here, lower the texture, and what you can see is you pull it too far and it starts to look a little bit unnatural, a little bit too fake, but it does start to smooth out a lot of those little fine grain details. Versus, let's say I wanted to pull out more details from these plants. Well, that's more of a medium scale detail. And I would jump to clarity, so I could go all the way up, 
or all the way down. One thing I do like to use clarity for is sometimes taking off the digitalness of digital photography just to remove some of the sharpness. Sometimes I'll use that in landscape photos to reduce the contrast around edges of trees and leaves. So with this photo, I would probably drop the clarity a little bit, drop the texture, just a hair, to, again, to take off that digital edge. This is what before looks like. This is what after looks like. It's a very subtle but effective way to smooth out and make your portraits look just a little bit better. Here's another photo where we have a wide range of fine grain details and larger details. What I would look at in this photo is maybe pulling out some more detail around her hat and her sweater that she's wearing because I really like the textures here. And in this case, I would do the same thing. Grab that texture slider, and you can see it just starts to ever so slightly increase the texture there. If I zoom out, you can see it's increasing the texture there. It's also increasing some of the textures in the back. So what you can always do is if you're not sure, you can apply texture and clarity as a local adjustment brush. So if I come in here and say, create new mask, go to brush and then start to brush it on. Now what I can do is since I've brushed it out is if I come in and say I want a little bit more clarity, a little bit more texture, now I can really allow the details on her hat and on her sweater to pop out. Here's another example where I wanna pull a little bit of clarity out of this to allow the plants to pop out. But what you'll notice is that there are some very fine grain details or some high frequency details on the edges of this trillium. So immediately I could grab the clarity and drag that up and that kind of makes the photo pop a little bit. But if I wanna pull out all those little veins inside that plant, I can grab the texture, you know, before, after. Of course, you don't wanna overdo it and you can always apply this locally with just a brush if that's what you're after. Final example, I wanna touch really quickly on dehaze. In this photo, it was snowing and there's kind of like this light glowy effect because all the light from the sign is hitting the snow and the humidity that's in the air. If I wanted to get rid of that, I could really quickly come down to dehaze and boom, it's gone. Super simple tool, super effective, depending on the look you're going for. Now, if you wanted to add more haze to make your photos look more glowy and dreamy, this is a photo that I've edited before on this channel, so you can check out that tutorial up here. But if I actually do a negative dehaze or kind of like adding haze and I go all the way to the left with this, it can really start to make your photo look like it's glowing. Again, it's not affecting those fine grain details like what you would see in the snow here. It's not affecting those medium details like maybe these light poles or that person. If you wanted to affect those, then you come in, start to drag clarity or start to drag texture. And again, for every image that you're using, the effect is gonna be completely different. If you like this tutorial, go ahead and let me know down in the comments below or give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, I'll link two right here that you can check out and jump right into for more Lightroom editing. If you like this video, make sure you stick around, subscribe so that I'll see you in the next one. And until next time, peace.